Namaskar, I am Biju Dharmapalan and you are watching Science Time, a show that brings you the latest developments from the world of science and technology. Let's first look at some of the exciting stories. World's largest solar telescope array is now complete. CRISPR cancer trial success paves the way for personalized treatment. Artemis 1 mission takes flight in historic leap forward for NASA's Moon program. Now let's see the news in detail. China has completed the construction of the Diocheng Solar Radio Telescope on the Tibetan Plateau. Construction of the Diocheng Solar Radio Telescope which consists of more than 300 dish-shaped antennas forming a circle more than 3 kilometers in circumference was completed on 13th November. Trial operations will begin in June. Built at an estimated cost of $14 million, the observatory will be used to study the sun and explore its effect on space and Earth's environment. Radio telescopes such as DSRT are useful for studying activities in the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona such as solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These are giant eruptions of hot plasma from the corona that occur when the sun's twisted magnetic field snaps and then reconnects. When the high energy particles released during a CME hurtle towards Earth, the resulting space weather can damage orbiting satellites and disrupt power grids on Earth. DSRT has a wide field of view, at least 36 times bigger than the Sun's disk, allowing the telescope to track the development of coronal mass ejections and observe how high energy particles propagate through space. DSRT's 313 antennas will allow it to achieve high sensitivity for better space weather forecasting. The Tibetan plateau was chosen for establishing the telescope since it is the highest plateau on Earth with an average elevation of 4000 meters. This elevation provides photometric conditions for observation with an extremely arid climate and unusually clear local sky. Now let's move to the next story. A small clinical trial has shown that the researchers can use gene editing using clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats popularly known as CRISPR to alter immune cells so that they will recognize mutated proteins specific to a person's tumors. Those cells can then be safely set loose in the body to find and destroy their target. It is a first attempt to combine two hot areas in cancer research. Gene editing to create uh, personalized treatments and engineering immune cells called T cells so as to better target tumors. The approach was tested in 16 people with solid tumors including in the breast and colon. The biggest hurdle in fighting cancer is that the disease cells look pretty much the same as every other cell in a person's body. While chemotherapy and radiation treatments are as targeted as they can be, they still kill off a lot of healthy cells on top of the cancer cells. The results of this research were published in a recent issue of the journal Nature. Now let's move to the next story. The historic Artemis 1 mission took flight on November 16th after months of anticipation. The milestone event kicked off a journey that will send an uncrewed spacecraft around the moon, paving the way for NASA to return astronauts to the lunar surface for the first time in half a century. The 32-story Space Launch System or SLS rocket surged off the launch pad from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral 
at uh, 1 47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Atop the rocket was the Orion spacecraft, a gumdrop shaped capsule that broke away from the rocket after reaching space. Orion is designed to carry humans, but its passengers for the test mission are a simulated crew of three, one male and two female mannequins, fitted with sensors to measure radiation levels and other stresses that astronauts would experience. Named for the ancient Greek goddess of the hunt and Apollo's twin sister, Artemis aims to return astronauts to the moon's surface as early as 2025. Twelve astronauts walked on the moon during six Apollo missions from 1969 to 1972. The only space flights yet to place humans on the lunar surface. The new moon program enlisted commercial partners such as Elon Musk, SpaceX, and space agencies of Europe, Canada, and Japan to eventually establish a long-term lunar base as a stepping stone to even more ambitious human voyages to Mars. A top objective is to test the durability of Orion's heat shield during re-entry as it hits the Earth's atmosphere at 24,500 miles per hour or 32 times the speed of sound on its return from the lunar orbit, much faster than re-entries from the space station. The heat shield is designed to withstand re-entry friction expected to raise temperatures outside the capsule to nearly 5000 degree Fahrenheit or 2760 degrees Celsius. The spacecraft also is set to release a payload of uh, 10 miniaturized science satellites called CubeSats, including one designed to map the abundance of ice deposit on the moon's south pole, where Artemis seeks to land astronauts eventually. Now let's move to the Science Quest segment. The question for this week's Science Quest is, what is Web3? The internet is made from the computers in the world that are networked together from laptops to tiny sensors. The World Wide Web is the software we run on the internet to help us navigate, find and use resources or content, data files that might be anything from videos to text documents stored on all computers. In the early days, most websites were static, fixed pages. The transition to Web 2.0 and dynamic content occurred at the beginning of the century. Now pages could change in response to user input and concepts such as blogs, wikis enabled users to create new content. This evolved into new media as audio, photos, video, and gaming became integrated into the web. Web3 is said to be the third great evolution by those who hope for a more secure and decentralized web. Making use of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and NFTs, some hope that Web3 will provide the privacy, scalability, and security that is currently missing. With this, we come to the end of this edition of Science Time. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. We will be back with more exciting stories from the world of science next week. Stay tuned to India Science.